What's up, guys? Look at what we have here. Sailor Moon. Ah! Okay, I have a lot of regrets, though. So we're going to get into it in a little bit. All of my regrets. And Chibiusa, yes, we had to do her. Um, it is missing um, tux Tuxedo Mask, but there's a reason. So... I decided that I wanted to do C Curve Square, and I wish you guys would stop me. Like, I planned this out. I drew um, a couple pictures and stuff just to get an idea of what I wanted to do. And here is the products that we're going to be using, which was Dragon Heart, which is um, the pre-made glitter mix. And then you're a star confettis and then this foil me kit, which it's our Valentine's Day foils. Um, I didn't use this at all. And you guys are going to get to see my prep routine up close. Um, I don't go through all the fingers. I just show you guys how gentle and kind of slow moving I am. I don't sit there and gouge at my nail. Um, this is a pretty decent pumice stick. It has quite a bit of grit on it. All I'm doing is just gently rubbing it over my nail plate and it's pulling up all that crusty, dusty, um, layers, whatever you would want to call it, the protein. Um, and then I go in with my sanding band at 5,000 RPMs and just use this to get up whatever dead skin on that nail plate that is left over and remove shine. And the entire time I keep this parallel to the nail plate. I do not gouge it in at a 45 degree angle. I don't want to create rings of fire and I don't want to cause any um, heat spikes. So I just make sure that I'm gently uh, caressing it, I guess, over the nail plate. And then here is my cuticle bit, which I love this bit. I don't have to do any work at all. I don't push onto the plate. I don't have to do anything. Literally, I just kind of skim it across the top of the nail plate. And it just, anything that is there lifted up off the, on the nail plate, anything that is lifted on the nail plate, this bit is flicking away. So just make sure that you have good utensils tools utensils tools whatever make sure that you have good ones and you don't have to be rough you can be gentle um i find that people use dulled out bits and um the wrong bits and they find themselves being kind of rough and with the right tools with sharp tools you shouldn't you should never have to be rough the tools should really just do the work for you so, going in with our Dehydrate Her and then two coats of our Prime Her, um, I show you guys how I decide to go about doing this set. So, I decided that since I don't have any C-curve square tips, I was just going to use a form and create the tip myself. So, when I apply my form, I always put the sticky tab down the underside just to add structure to the form. Even though these forms are pretty structured and thick, I go in and pinch the very end before I apply it to my finger. And then I just make sure that it is as straight as possible when I'm applying it. I don't think that this is rocket science. I've seen people really um, overanalyze this. You do what you can with your nail bed. Everybody's nail beds are different. Some people's angle down, some people's angle up, some people's um, have hype hype <laughs> hype um, where they're extended. It kind of hurts. You know, honestly, it's troubleshooting. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys how to apply a form when honestly everybody's finger is different. You just got to sit there and play with it and get used to it. And everybody, every time you apply it on somebody else, it's going to be a different experience. I promise you, I have done this. And everybody that I apply forms to, it's a totally different experience between each person. So it's just something that you play with and figure out on your own. So pretty much I'm just going in and building out the square nail bed, right? 
and on the side of the forms there is lines you see the pink and black staggered lines right that look like a stiletto or almond if I was to build them out like that on the form the it's like a little pink and black ladder so straight up the sides going straight out there is little white lines and that's the guide that I'm following. I'm looking at my side wall for my fingernail. And wherever line that is closest to, that's the line I follow all the way out onto the form. And then I'm just taking it out to number 11. And I make sure that I keep track of um, every nail as I'm making them. And I make sure that I line them up to, you know, the same length. I make sure that I am paying attention to the length and I line them all out to 11 and then I compare them together. And then here I'm just pinching to create more of that C curve. Now I wish somebody would have stopped me. I have big hands and there's a lot of shapes that don't look good on me, right? And this is one of them. So C curve square is kind of bulky looking. Um, I did the best I could, especially in filing. I really tried to thin the nail down. This is the first time I ever did a C curve square. Um, tip, form, anything. First time ever doing C curve square. And let me tell you, it wasn't fun. I didn't like it. I, I don't like this style. I don't like the look. And I don't like, I just, I don't like it. It, it, in all honesty, I, I don't like this. This is ridiculous. This is too much nail. And, you know, the only good thing that I found out of all of this is if you was to have long nails on and you just press on the tip, right, you can kind of feel uncomfortable because you feel like it's either pushing up and back or pushing down and you, you get worried that your tip could snap, right? When you have long nails... You get worried that they could break in half. So with these though, when I put pressure on the tip, no lie, there is no uncomfortable feeling. It absorbs all of the pressure. That C-curve is creating so much strength. It was so comfortable. I could sit there and just, I bet you I could just play on an elevator all day just pressing buttons and not feel uncomfortable just smacking these nails into stuff, you know, like I could point, like I could, I could take my finger and poke somebody in the chest over and over again <laughs> and it wouldn't bother me. It, 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 it feels very sturdy. So after creating them, I did go in and try to file them into shape. I wanted them to be thin, but now that I go back and look at it, I should have thinned out the nail bed area even more. Um, but I was using clear, so that's annoying because it's really hard. It's really hard to judge where your nail is when you're going in with clear acrylic. And, you know... From application to filing, you can see your nail under the acrylic. So you're always scared you're going to hit your nail. And yeah, so maybe if I ever did C-curve nails again with a form, I actually think I would like to try doing it with tips one day um, just to see what that would be like or what it would look like. Um, but if I ever did it with forms, again, I would not go in and encapsulate glitter. I wouldn't go in with clear acrylic. I would honestly try it with nude acrylic and see how far that gets me. And then just do a topical design. Because with the C, C curve, you're honestly getting a lot of bulk with that C curve already and then to encapsulate means that you're adding on top of it and it just it was a little bit obnoxious I did not like this design at all I love this design as far as the glitter I'm saying as far as the shape and everything it just it wasn't it for me it's not 
I was really contemplating um, taking them up a little bit, doing more filing on the C-curve, taking some of that C-curve out of it, but that would have been a lot of work. So I chose to just stick it out and, you know, sometimes things like this are an omen to what's to come, right? So you guys know I've been sick and I have not been feeling good at all. Oh, so we're going in. I decided to pop in um, Bruised Ego. So this is from Candy from a Stranger collection. Um, this is our purple from, from that collection. And I'm just going to be going in and doing like glitter fades with it and stuff. And using that Your Star Confetti's. Uh, just to uh, add some designs and everything else. But... So, like I said, um, I can always tell, like, when a set starts out rough for me, where things start to go wrong, or I'm just not feeling it, and I'm already too far along to turn back, it's like a bad omen. It's like, it, it, it kind of foretells what's going to happen, right? So, I kind of was annoyed with how this was looking and it was already looking bulky and I knew like I had lost my urge to do these nails um because I was mad like this is beautiful acrylic this is a beautiful design idea with Sailor Moon and the shape was just killing it for me and I was mad so I'm like, man, if this is any, you know, sign as to how this is going to turn out, this is going to be crappy. And I knew not feeling good and everything that I really needed to get these done quick because my stamina is just gone. I have no stamina. I can do something. I try my best to stay active, even being sick and I'll get up and do some stuff for as long as I can, but then, like, once I'm done, I'm done. I have no more energy, and I have to lay down, and, you know, I've I've never slept so much in my life. I will get up and work for, like, four or five hours, and then I have to lay down and recuperate for, like, eight or nine hours. It, it's ridiculous. I've never slept so much in my life. I'm a very active person. And, like, to feel like this and to know, like, I wasted time on a set of nails that I don't like, it really pisses me off. Like, honestly, it's kind of heartbreaking because I only get to do one set on myself a week. And to have it be this set and now I have to wait, you know, I'm just pissed off. I'm really pissed off. And doing the nail art, it's like, you know... I got done with the nails and I really wasn't feeling the nails, but I made a bad decision by going in and doing Luna and the wand and Chibi first. And honestly, the focus was Sailor Moon. So I should have used most of my energy on Sailor Moon, but instead doing the other ones first, by the time I got to her... It was, I was out of time. It, it, it was over with for me. I had to hurry and get her done. And then literally I got her done, put some cuticle oil on, took pictures and clipped them off. Literally, that's how quick this set was over with. Like, that's why I was pissed off because I really like my sets to be beautiful so that I can take pretty pictures and get to look at them and admire them and I just don't admire this set at all so this thumb though so if this is um any sign as to doing a square nail correctly I will say that this short thumb because I do go in with shorter thumbs um you don't really get a picture of the thumb with the rest of the set for one um and long thumbs are hard to manage and it took me three days to finish this set I actually started this set on a Friday night and finished it Sunday at four o'clock in the morning because I just had to keep going back in and you know taking naps um, just not feeling well 
So I would do a little and then, you know, go do something else, uh, pack orders, get other stuff around, and then, um, you know, take a nap and then come back in. See, look at that glitter. Oh, that dragon's heart glitter is just to die for. I am so in love with that glitter. I, uh, and I wasted it on this set. Uh -huh. <laughs> so... All right, so we're going to go in, and because I'm doing nail art on top of these, I'm going in with matte gel polish. No, I'm so sorry, you guys. We do not have our matte yet. I don't know what's going on. They're supposed to email me as soon as it comes in. Um, everything's kind of rough right now with COVID and everything. It's... It's just hard, and I'm I'm a small business, so I'm not first in line for it, just saying. You know, we buy American products, and the, the supplier that we work with, the manufacturer, not supplier, they manufacture these products. Um, they're amazing with us, um, especially for us being a small business. I'm so excited to work with you know, a manufacturer that, um, a couple more widely known brands work with. So, you know, I'm sorry that I couldn't get the, the matte gel polish for Criminal Claws, but we're, we're getting there, you know, this, this time, in these times, things are just hard. So, all right, so I already matte gel polished all of the nails, and I'm going in, you've seen me do the handle of the wand, and I'm just using gel polish. I am out of gel paint. The only gel paint that I use in this set is the red. So everything else is just Beatles gel polish, and I'm going in and making the moon with black. So when I did the handle, I cured it, went in and did it again. So I went over it just to make sure that the color is there. And then I cleaned everything off with alcohol. All of it. And then I go in with the black moon and the black um, base to the wand. So then I can go in. Um, nothing else is sticky. I already cleaned the handle with acetone. The only thing on this nail that's going to be sticky is whatever is black gel polished. So now... After finishing the moon and the handle, I go in, leaving that black sticky still, I go in and um, burnish in gold chrome so that it will look, you know, um, like a gold. I wanted it to look real. So using our diamond gel, because I explained to you guys that the, our diamond gel is non-wipe, right? Right. So I wanted to make the wand look um, kind of 3D, but not 3D. I did not want it like lifted hugely off the nail, hugely. I swear, I don't know what I'm saying, but uh, I didn't want it to be lifted like immensely off the nail. I didn't want it to be like a brick sitting on the nail. I just wanted it to... Um, you know, kind of have a little bit of lift, but I didn't, you know, going in and doing these types of things with builder gel, you know, it, it's not shiny. You have to cleanse it and then still top coat builder gel. What's great about our diamond gel is that it is, um, non wipe and super shiny, super hard. So that's, what's great about it. You don't have to do any of that. If you want to go over your designs with it, just to add some texture you can do that and be done. You don't have to wipe. You don't have to cleanse. You don't have to do none of that. I love our diamond gel. <laughs> it is the most amazingest consistency ever. I'm in love with it. Uh, you, If you guys ever get the chance to try, you're going to be in love with this diamond gel. I promise you. It is. It, it's something of a whole different level. So going in and doing Luna... I'm just pretty much mapping out all of the outlines, right? And I'm not one to sit there and cure and cure and cure. So I'm a cheater. I go in and do a ton of work with my outlines not curing at all. Because if something ends up being 
um, not looking right or dimensional, I like to be able to just wipe it away. So I always do my outlines um, together and then I will cure kind of later on. Now, after getting all the outlines, I cured it and then I'm going in and kind of filling it in like a coloring book. Yeah. All right. So, hey, guys, <laughs> I just wanted you guys to know the reason that I'm talking so much in this video is because if you guys go back and look at my videos, I edit my videos with Video Guru. And now, for some reason, under all of my videos, it says copyrighted. So copyright claim. That pisses me off. I pay to use this um, service and... For them to have music on here that's copyrighted music, that's just, that's bullshit. I'm going to get a hold of this company and see like, hey, why are you guys um, letting us use copyrighted music? And if, if it's not copyrighted to us, if we're really allowed to use it, like you say we are, then you need to go and like take down your copyright claim on my YouTube channel because obviously I'm paying to use it and now I have copyright claims on my channel and I'm not really sure how to fix it. Um, it pisses me off. It says that I'm not eligible for monetization because of it. So don't ever use music that you think could be copyrighted because you will not get monetized for it. You won't get any of the money from those videos. So here is the dreaded Sailor Moon. When I did do Luna, just so you know, I went in and after doing the outlines with black and stuff, in order to fill Luna in, I just mixed black and base gel together. And that is what gave me, you know, a lighter colored black. So pretty much just black and base gel. But... So, this is where you're going to see me. Like, I'm kind of frantic doing this. And, like, I just, I wish I wouldn't have, I really wish that I wouldn't have cured right away with the yellow. I wish I would have done her facial features first before going in with the hair. Because the hair got in my way. And then literally throughout the rest of the video... I just sit there and try to make up for all the mistakes that I made from the very beginning. And I just didn't have time. I wish I could have just filed it off and, you know, been good, but it wasn't happening. I couldn't do it. I was out of time. Literally, as soon as I got done with her, I clipped these nails and ran. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... I will do Sailor Moon again one day, and I will do her so much better. I will do you guys proud. I swear to God I will. <laughs> but, all right. I'm going to let you guys go. I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for showing up. And I really hope you love her. Um, I hope you love Luna. Luna is so cute drinking her little milk, isn't she? <laughs> like, oh, Luna is adorable. And Chibi, Chibi is adorable. Chibi turned out great. But, all right, I'm going to let you guys go. I love you. I hope you enjoy this. All right, bye. Oh, wait, did I say my name's Sierra and you should subscribe to our channel? Yeah, subscribe. Okay. <laughs> and comment. Comment down below what you guys think about it. All right, I love you. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.